A very good evening to all of you and welcome to Primetime News. We are coming to you live and direct from the news studios here in Colombo. For the news first team, I'm Mazra San. And I'm Deshan Gonavala. Before we take a deeper look into the stories we've got lined up for you today, let's first take a look at the headlines. Mahanayakas of the Malwa Tuvanaskiri chapters say President still has time to solve people's issues. <laughs> President leaves to the Philippines on a four-day visit. China to offer another 300 million US dollars in loans. Bandhanaguna Wardhana's opinion on the increasing debt burden. China's space agency confirms success of special mission on the moon. On to our lead story now, the caterpillar species currently devastating cultivations across the island is on the risk of spreading. Today's focus is on this species of caterpillars which has already destroyed more than 50% of corn cultivation across the island. The Sena caterpillar was first discovered last October in a cornfield in the Ampara district and since spread to the Monaragala, Kurunagala and Anuradhapura districts as well as to the Gaul and Mathura districts. Nearly 50% of the 80,000 hectares of corn cultivation across the country has already been destroyed due to this caterpillar species. <laughs> Corn crops in several areas including the Siambalandua, Mahakalugolla, Atimale, Kotiagala and Kaluob are currently under attack by the Sena caterpillar. This is the worm on the corn fruit. He eats the complete fruit. We do farming after taking so much of debt. Now all our crops are being destroyed by these insects. We sprayed in pesticides twice, all in vain. It is through farming we feed our families. We will have to commit suicide along with our children. What sort of karma is this? We are suffering because of this so-called Sena caterpillar. Our tour around the Gaul and Mathara districts revealed that the Sena caterpillar devours other types of crops such as mung, millet and wheat. This caterpillar can devour more than 100 plant species including corn. This means that this pest is a threat to the food production in all parts of the country. This caterpillar, native to America, was later detected in Africa several years ago. After destroying crops across Africa, this caterpillar species made its way to India during the first half of last year. It is believed that the Sena caterpillar spread to Sri Lanka from our immediate neighbour, India. This caterpillar is actually a butterfly. An egg is laid and a worm comes out of the egg. This worm or the caterpillar then transforms into a pupa inside a cocoon. Finally, the butterfly comes out. This butterfly is brown in color and is only active at night. The color of the Sena caterpillar will vary between green and brown. There are some four spots on the abdomen of the caterpillar which forms the shape of a square. Agronomists say that the moth that is formed through this caterpillar species can fly hundreds of kilometers on prevailing winds. Even to date, countries that were affected by the Sena caterpillar species have failed to find any solution to mitigate this issue. This insect is a foreign species to our country. Another predator species for this caterpillar has not yet been formed in our country. Therefore, a few paddy seasons will be affected. When harvesting, it is important to remove parts of the plant that has been attacked by the caterpillar. If we fail to do so, it means that the Sena caterpillar will be carried forward to the next season as well. When the next season starts, especially corn cultivation, the farmers must decide collaboratively when to conclude and commence the cultivation process. In a bid to solve this massive epidemic our country's agriculture sector is currently facing, News First initiated yet another national project. Three special research groups along with the Faculty of Agriculture of the University of Peradeniya were dispatched to Monaragala, Ampara and Anuradhapura districts. 
If everyone does not join to solve this issue, we will not be able to control the invasion of this caterpillar. It is important to use every mechanism possible. There is no time to point fingers at anyone. Everyone must try to control this issue and not ignore saying this is a government and agriculture department issue. Mainly, we must control this species from spreading. We cannot stop the butterfly from flying. However, we must stop them breeding. Salabia Piamagan Yanaka Pira Nantaka and Berry. No Salabia, I think he must be in our star and Etikaraka and Katami Vishalamadi. With the support of the University of Peradenia, News First will tour around the areas affected by this caterpillar species and will conduct an in depth analysis into this matter. <laughs>
Only a draft has been presented. If it is to be approved, it has to be approved by the cabinet, passed in parliament and also approved by the president. It is a massive task. It cannot be completed easily. The state minister later called on the chief prelate of the Malbatu chapter of the Siam sect. <laughs> If everyone has approved it unanimously, it is good. Carry on. If you bring in a constitution and the others do not approve of it, it will not work. Whatever is done, it should be done together. The people are going through many hardships. A proper process should be put in place to resolve this. National Organizations Collective for Sri Lanka also met with the chief prelates today. Representatives of the National Organizations Collective for Sri Lanka, who obtained the signatures for a letter opposite the temple of the sacred tooth relic, then visited the chief prelate of the Malvatu chapter of the Siam sect to present the content of the letter. The group had arrived without giving prior notice. <laughs> <laughs> but the Mahanayaka Thera had given his permission for a discussion. The attention of the chief prelate and the representatives of the National Organization's Collective for Sri Lanka was drawn towards an article published on print media. The group then met with the chief prelate of the Askiri chapter of the Siam sect and expressed their opposition against the new constitution. If 21 MPs are bribed and crosses over onto the other side, this constitutional process will go ahead. The Mahanayaka Theras are the group who protected this country for the past 2,500 years. So we make this request from the Mahanayaka Theras of the Askiri and Malvatu chapters and all other Mahanayaka Theras. And the Malvatu Mahanayaka Thera accepted this to unite and bring the President and the Prime Minister here and make it clear to them that this is not the time to draft or amend the constitution. Go for a general election in the future and give the people the power to choose. Both parties can bring a new constitution if they want. The people will give the power to whomever they please. Now the Bank of China, the country's fourth biggest lender by assets, has offered a loan of $300 million to Sri Lanka, which can be raised to $1 billion. Quoting a source in Colombo with direct knowledge on the matter, Reuters reported this today. The source said the government is considering the offer because, quote, it is difficult in borrowing money after recent rating downgrades, unquote. When News First inquired, a senior official at the Ministry of Finance confirmed that the Colombo branch of the Bank of China has offered a loan of $300 million to Sri Lanka. He added that the cabinet approval has been granted to hold discussions in this regard with the relevant authorities. I think, uh, I feel that last uh, couple of uh, years we had a lot of issues, especially a lot of uh, frauds and a lot of issues, especially in the financial side. As soon as possible, if we can solve these uh, financial issues and financial problems by legal terms, I think this is a good opportunity to attract more funds, more money to our country. I think uh, we can solve our uh, unemployment issues and our financial crisis, and especially we have now very big debt issues. To solve these issues, especially the, our, our rupee values go down day by day, I think we need a lot of dollars to our country. This is a 
Now, foreign investors have sold 3.6 billion rupees uh, during the week ended on the 11th of January in 2019 from the government securities market. The stock market saw a net outflow of 753 million rupees during the same period, bringing the total outflow for the year so far up to 10.3 billion rupees and 860 million rupees respectively. During 2018, Sri Lanka's government securities market lost 160 billion rupees, while the Colombo Stock Exchange saw a 22.8 billion rupee net outflow. The outstanding stock of T-bills and T-bonds held by foreigners has decreased by 2.29% during the reporting week and reduced to 154,202.18 million rupees from 157,823.41 million rupees. Total foreign reserves declined to 6,936.35 million US dollars as at the 31st of December 2018 when compared with US dollars 7,005.32 million as at the 30th of November 2018. Let's now listen to some of the views expressed in the Davasa political program aired on our sister channel Sirasa TV this evening. <laughs> Now there was the central bank bond scam. It's a shame that the people of this country continue to forget about this. The main accused in this scam is the Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. It was under his purview that this bond scam took place. The accused in this case was not bought before the law and some of them have managed to obtain sympathetic bail using loopholes of the law. So will investors have confidence in a government that cannot bring the thieves who robbed the country's central bank before the law even after three years? This is not a rural bank that they had broken into. This is the central bank of Sri Lanka. Definitely, an investor comes into this country not to lose what they already have by fulfilling the needs of someone else. There should be democracy in the country. They should have faith in the country. They should have faith in the political leadership of the country. The same leadership takes the central bank under their purview illegally. The central bank should be under the Ministry of Finance. Even today, it is under the Ministry of Finance, but they have created a separate ministry. Some banks were under a separate ministry and the central bank was specifically under Ranil Vikramasinghe and he gave an illegal appointment to one of his closest friends. Within 56 days of the government coming into power, they cleaned out the bank, washed their hands and distributed all the money they stole among themselves. <laughs> The Economic Research Unit of the Opposition convened a media briefing in Colombo today. Lanka andu e mainda ke naay ke lajati akne. Maine bola ne taapyaak bandi na naay labagat tanam ek mainda ke naay kuenta di bola. Dasak ekata asan na kalya etumat. In the current government, there is no such thing as Mahinda's debt. If he has borrowed money to build a wall in Madamulana, it would have been his debt. For almost a decade, he had to borrow money nationally and internationally. What for? To rid our country of LTTE and bring peace to our country. You can't face a war with a catapult. Most of the debt was utilized to develop the North and East following the war. However, the current government has achieved no such feat, yet they have piled up a record number of debt. In 2025, the biggest debt repayment in the history of the country will fall due. That won't be Mahinder's debt. This debt was incurred during Ranil's time. After coming into power in 2015, this government borrowed automatic bonds worth 2.15 million US dollars. Those will fall in 2025. Today, the government cannot face this financial crisis. At this very moment, the subject finance ministers Mangala Samarawira and Harsha De Silva are in Washington. The reason being, they borrowed 1.5 billion US dollars, which would mature in three years, but they have not even gotten close to meeting the targets. They have to provide answers as to why these targets were not met. They should also gain Washington's approval to string a set of lies and present the budget in March. The confidence of the international community in our financial system, banking system and our borrowing method has depleted significantly. Sri Lanka has been blacklisted for money laundering following the episode where the central bank was robbed in broad daylight. No one believes in this government. We will never be able to settle off these bonds. I would be an economist in another world by the time we do so. <laughs> Rajivasma, take it, Rajivasma, take it, Marsu, Daram, 
No, we as the Economic Research Unit see it from a very different angle. We simply see it as comments made to create a hype among the people. In a practical sense, the presidential candidate will be decided two weeks before the nominations are handed in. Group of electoral organizers of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party convened a media briefing today. It was revealed during the media briefing that a document, including proposals and recommendations with regard to the SLFP, has been handed over to the president. We discussed a list of activities that should be formed in line with the direction of our party. This is why we discussed in Reginald Kure's office. Accordingly, the documents that we have prepared have now been handed over. Anyone who reads this document will understand that there is no conspiracy. Madam Chandrika did not attend any meetings held in Regina Kure's office and Regina Kure is a witness to this. I state with much responsibility as it was I who invited all of them, but I did not invite Madam Kumarutunga. <laughs> Yes, this board only includes the pictures of our party founders and the present leader. However, former President Chandrika Bandaranayake Kumarutunga, through a letter addressed to President Maithripala Sirisena dated the 11th of January this year, states that she had met with several party organizers and activists upon their request. The letter reveals that this group had obtained advice from the former president. In her letter, Madam Kumar Tunga states that following the conclusion of the meeting, a document prepared by a group of SLFP organizers was handed over to her. She also states that this document will be forwarded to President Sirisena. This document, which was handed over to the President, includes the names of Rajika Kodituaku, G.H. Buddhadasa, Ruan Ranatunga, Sanjay Siri Wardana, and M.M. M. Amjad, who were also present at today's media briefing. Now, the newly built Dhamma School building of the Sita Ramavihare in Sisilagama Hambantota was declared open by the Minister of Housing, Construction and Cultural Affairs and also the Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Sajid Premadasa. The project is being implemented under the Samata 7 housing program in the Hambantota district. 2.5 million rupees was donated for the construction of the Dhamma School building by a private donor under the instructions of the Minister. When I took over duties as the Minister of Cultural Affairs, I created a new program. I decided to build buildings and halls to assist our children in obtaining Dhamma school education. By the end of this year, we will build Dhamma schools in all districts. All airlines which used to operate via Colombo to Makkala had been granted all nine air traffic rights since those airlines had refused to carry out their operations in Makkala airport due to declining passengers and bird strike. Now this was revealed at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the irregularities at the Sri Lankan Airlines, Sri Lankan Catering and Mihin Lanka yesterday. Director Air Transport and Economic Regulation of the Civil Aviation Authority, Rehan Mario Warniappa, further informed the Commission that the Civil Aviation Authority issued seven additional rights to fly Dubai to entice them to continue services at the Matale Airport. Speaking on temporary operating permits, the witness stated that such permits are issued due to insufficient time to form bilateral agreements and the issue of such permits are not specifically stated in the law. Waniapa also informed the Commission that a requirement to issue transit visas for Hong Kong-based transit flights are currently underway and this issue has been raised at the Civil Aviation Authority of Hong Kong. He stated, however, that Sri Lankan does not fly to Hong Kong at present. Now, a youth dialogue with the United Nations Secretary-General's Envoy on Youth, Jayatma Vikramanayaka, was held in Colombo yesterday. This dialogue was held under the theme Localizing Youth 2030, the UN Youth Strategy. This was organized by the members of the Adil Bakir Makar Foundation. And what we want to achieve through the youth strategy for young people all over the world, regardless of where they come from, um, what they are doing, is to create a world that every young person has access to equal opportunities, that every young person's human rights are upholded, protected and promoted. Uh, so one of the main um, objectives, so the goals of the youth strategy is to bring together the voices, perspectives, issues, challenges that young people have shared with us over the years and, and put it into a document that can uh, 
very practically guide the UN system when it comes to engaging young people. Uh, so the five priority areas very quickly are um, young people's role in uh, peace and security and humanitarian action, uh, young people's uh, human rights, specifically focusing civic and political rights, um, access to education and health services, um, decent uh, decent employment and uh, economic opportunities um, and the fifth one is amplifying young people's voices engagement adv and engagement advocacy and participation governor of the western province azad saleh met with the leader of the bora community in sri lanka Sedana mufadal saifuddin in colombo recently An event was organized in Colombo to celebrate the 75th birthday of its spiritual leader, Sayed Namufadda Saifuddin. Mayor of Colombo, Rosie Senanayaka, and several other dignitaries graced the event. <laughs> A token of remembrance was also presented to Sayed Namufadda Saifuddin at the event. Well, that's a wrap of your primetime news this evening. I've been Deshan Bonavala for the News Press team. And I'm Azra Hassan. Take care and good night. Will foreign debt be Sri Lanka's undoing? News First, Charlene Benedict speaks to senior lecturer of the University of Colombo, Priyanka Dudusinghe, on Biz in Focus at 9.30 tonight.